Okay, so we're back with another round of studio sessions. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about the kick and the bass line, uh, about how to master a track and also how to build a melody. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit more about how to arrange the track and also about uh, how to build your own uh, studio. So uh, let's get started. All right, guys, so um, we're back, uh, you know, in a project. Uh, right now, what I've done is um, um, I've, I've used uh, the track Cuba Libre to, to tell a little bit more about how to arrange the track. Um, you know, arranging a track is, is a pretty you know, intuitive uh, um, uh, process. Um, you know, everybody has their own little preference on how to, to build a track. Um, you know, some tracks it's, it's better to, to go into the break very quickly and then uh, go into the drop pretty quickly and then go to a second break. Other tracks uh, with other styles, for instance, like uh, house or more and more techy or progressive tracks, they can really um, use, you know, the, the, the usage of a kick and a bass line um, to, to build the, the intro of a track. Um, so it's pretty, pretty uh, intuitive. Um, you know, for instance, uh, with the Cube Libre track, I, um, I pretty much started with a simple rhythm, build it up a little bit with the vocal, and then it kind of dropped, it kind of dropped in like a small drop, and then um, went to a small break, uh, built a little bit more, and then went to the, to the final break. Uh, where you know the, the vocal got more room, uh, there was an addition of, of little trumpet and um, um, the lead sound was, was giving all the room possible to really explode and uh, in the end the, the second drop was kind of like um, everything coming together you know with, with the lead sound uh, with, with like a, a solid step. So that, that's one way of, of building this track but you know you, Perhaps uh, another build-up uh, would have been uh, possible as well. Um, so, you know, the tip I, I would like to give you guys is uh, whenever you produce a track, uh, make sure uh, what you could do is, is record three different parts. I've done that now as well with the Cuba Libre track, where I've recorded uh, the whole track, uh, but only the kick and bass part for one track. And I did a separate track for all the effects. So, just all the build-ups and the crashes. And the rest of the track uh, I, I um, recorded as well. So now you pretty much have this track without the effect, uh, without the kick in the bass line. As you can hear. So, um, what you can do now is uh, sometimes when you feel like your track isn't really working that well, uh, you can record your track in a few parts and then um, arrange it back in, in a new project and you put it uh, underneath each other. So now you actually have the whole track but uh, divided into three parts. Now you can actually uh, cut really easily in your track and you can actually really, um, you know, experiment on, on how you want to build your track. For instance, you know, I've, I've built this track by using only rhythm and then going to the small climax. Um, but for instance, if you would go straight to um, the part building towards the break and you would only use the kick and bass and the effects, you could also start your track like this. And then for instance, build it up and going towards the drop, uh, the, sorry, the breakdown. So what you could do is, for instance, have a build up, use a low filter, for instance, in this part. And now you pretty much go straight uh, towards the uh, towards the break section. So that's that's a different way to build a track. Uh, for everybody it's like their own preference, uh, but uh, I can give you a few tips that, that will help you uh, within the arranging process. Uh, the first tip is when you go to this part, this is kind of like the, the start of your track. What you want to do is you want to make sure that there's, there's not too much bass going on in, in that particular part because you want to make sure that uh, you keep it as small as possible because when then 
The kick and the bass line first drops and, and you have to first step playing there. Uh, you really get, to get the effect of you know, a, a big explosion of music. Uh, so keep the first part you know, as small as possible. So there's a few um, um, simple tricks um, with regards to arranging tracks and also to make sure that uh, you have the maximum imp uh, impact uh, on a certain part. For instance, uh, if you go to the, uh, to the build up and it kicks in into the first drop, this part over here. What you can do to add a little bit more volume in this in the start is uh, you go to the kick and bass line parts over here. Then he used track automation, so I'm going to use the automation of the volume channel track. Uh, and I'm going to add a little bit more volume to the first kick. So that makes sure that the minutes the track drops on that point, you have the maximum input uh, of the kick. So you have a lot of pressure on, on the speakers, so uh, people know that this is uh, uh, the moment it, it, it's supposed to happen. So if you add everything together, So now the first kick has a little bit more punch uh, than the rest, and it's only um, um, uh, needed on the first kick. So you, you don't want to make sure you want to make sure the track is not going to distort or anything. Uh, but on the first kick, uh, if there's room, definitely add a little bit more volume there. All right, guys. So uh, another trick that that actually works really well is uh, when you go into the break section. Uh, so that that would be this part over here. Uh, since there's a lot of music being taken out of uh, the track, uh, you can also uh, lower the volume a little bit more of the break. So if you go to the output section over here of the break. So now <coughs> I'm gonna put a point over there and I'm gonna make sure that 101 has a point so this is the point where the climax kicks in. So a cool trick is to lower the volume a little bit of your break, like this. And perhaps even more towards the end. So when you go to the build, Now you're gonna make sure that the impact is, is as loud as possible. So simply by lowering the volume uh, before your uh, uh, drop uh, helps to, 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 uh, um, to make the drop sound a lot, lot fatter, you know, uh, when it needs to, because that's the po point it really needs to explode. So this is like a really cool trip, you know, but with, with arranging, it's, it's a pr pretty personal process, uh, but it's also always good to realize that you can uh, completely rearrange your track if possible. If a track doesn't work out uh, the way you want it to, or the crowd isn't responding uh, in the right way, uh, you can use this simple trick by recording the th three different parts and re-edit um, just by you know cutting cutting it all up into different parts and and kind of like uh, see it as a puzzle and and you know re-edit the whole track. That's also a really good way on on the first step on on how to produce you know music is by by using existing tracks from other DJs, uh, go to Logic or like um, uh, Ableton Live and really cut up the whole track and, and kind of like make a completely new edit out of it. Uh, it's a very learned for process on how to produce a track and how to arrange the track uh, to make it sound as, as good as possible. All right guys, so uh, this is my studio. So this is where I've been producing now for about a year and a half. Um, so I really um, had the studio built um, um, really, you know, with regards to make the sound uh, coming out of the speakers as honest as possible. Um, you know, there's a few things you want to take in consideration when building your own studio. Uh, for instance, you're, you're seeing all these panels uh, around. Um, you want to cut corners as much as possible. It's, uh, corners are, are places where, you know, your, uh, your, your sound will, will build up 
and it, it will come back at you and you want to make sure that the sound doesn't come back at you as much as possible you know bouncing off uh, from the walls because it uh, is going to create an honest uh, you know picture when it comes to to producing a track so um, you know the first big tip I can give you when building a studio is uh, using as much uh, fabric and carpet as possible to cut out any echo in the room um, so uh, put in a couch uh, put in uh, some drapes uh, behind the windows uh, make sure, for instance, you have a carpet floor. I don't actually have a carpet myself, that's why I'm using all these side panels. Uh, but if you have a carpet, so you actually don't have to use um, a lot of these panels. Um, you know, cutting corners, that's very important. And um, um, so basically making sure that the echo is, 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 uh, is completely, you know, finished out of your, 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 your space. All right, so um, you know the second tip is uh, is the bass. Uh, that's the toughest uh, frequency to to cover in in the studio. Um, you know the panels you see over there are bass traps. Uh, basically, they're they're like really thick uh, panels that make sure that the bass that travels uh, on the back of your speaker uh, doesn't come back at you. Um, so it's really important uh, to, to have some, some fabric over there or to use bass traps uh, just to make sure that uh, the bass you, 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 that hits you over here is the bass that's just coming out of the front of the speakers. Yeah, another very important tip uh, is the placement of your speakers. Uh, they need to be, be on ear uh, level and also pointed at you in, in like a perfect triangle uh, to make sure that your st stereo image is, is perfectly balanced. Uh, for instance, if you would put your speakers all the way here and, and over, all the way over here, then the, the stereo image would sound really, really uh, nice and warm, uh, but your track is going to sound very mono because you think it's very stereo, uh, but it's not. That's pretty much the same um, uh, problem you, you will get when using uh, headphones, when uh, yeah, pretty much mastering a track. Uh, so that's very important, using a perfect triangle with your uh, speakers. So another um, um, uh, tip to actually uh, measure your own uh, studio is to, to make sure that the sound you're sitting is, is going to be um, as, as honest as possible. Uh, it's a little trick I learned myself. So for instance, when you go to, to a, a, a simple sound, for instance, like a sinus. Okay, well this sinus um, should sound on the same volume on every single frequency. So if you would put on this sound and you would go higher, sounds really funny, and you would go lower. And that's this is the important part, it's the bass. It needs to sound on the exact volume everywhere you sound. So I, I, um, everywhere you go in, into the spectrum. So for instance, I've put in an equalizer with a peak on the bass. So now you can hear when you go here. So that means if the, if the equalizer weren't on and you would have a peak over there, then uh, this should have been a peak um, you wanted to tackle. Um, so that will basically mean that you would need an equalizer to compensate for that by doing exactly the opposite. So it would compensate uh, the bass. So you want the, the bass on this frequency is one, uh, three, four. Uh, is is going to be as honest as possible. So basically, it's, it's making sure that uh, the sound on every single frequency sounds um, exactly on, on the same volume. So that's, that's like a simple trick without using all professional measuring devices uh, to, to get the most out of the sound in your uh, studio. All right, so uh, this over here is a diffuser. Um, you know, a diffuser is, is, uh, is a really cool tool to cut out um, mid-sized frequencies. And this is a pretty small uh, space, so this wouldn't actually have any effect. It looks cool as a decoration. But for bigger studios, this is a really cool device to make sure that the sound, the mid-sound, bounces off everywhere. So it makes sure that uh, you don't get, get an echo or, or peaks on the mid-sized uh, frequencies. So this is called a diffuser. Yeah, so when it comes to um, you know studio monitors, obviously that's one of the most um, important uh, devices you want to have in your studio, the right speakers. So um, you know when I started producing, I uh, used um, uh, the Mackies, the 824s, the the old edition. Uh, for me, that worked really well. But uh, then I, I blew up uh, the uh, the lowest uh, uh, driver, so that wasn't working anymore. So then I um, went to PSIs. So the PSIs are um, the ones you see, the big ones. 
over there. Uh, it's a three-way system, uh, which is, um, is really good when you're um, uh, tweaking um, your stereo image. Um, these are really good speakers. I've used them for a lot of tracks. I've used them for Coco, um, for uh, Riff, uh, a lot of tracks. And uh, they, they were excellent on, on, on to adjust your track perfectly. Um, I also switched uh, on to Genelex. Uh, Genelex uh, um, kind of have a more clubby feel to it. Um, I specifically chosen the Genelex because I like love the combination between the speakers and I've got a really big uh, woofer unit over there, which is actually um, um, way too big for this uh, studio unit. But you know, I've adjusted it so that uh, I, I can produce perfectly on it. So. Um, if you have uh, money to spend, uh, it's actually even better to have like different uh, speakers in your, in your studio so you can switch between uh, different uh, speakers. So this is a really uh, good tip actually when mastering a track. So I have a switchboard over here where I can listen to the same track on all the different speakers. So for instance, right now I'm listening on the Genelex, right now this is the, the PSI, and now it's on two little small Bose speakers, but those, those uh, speakers um, are there for a purpose that not everybody has like a perfect sound system at home. So you want to make sure that even on like little crappy speakers, uh, the sound is still uh, really good. So um, just to combine with different speakers in the studio, it's definitely gonna, gonna, gonna help you, um, you know, with the mastering of your track. You can also use the combination with a, with a good headphone um, just to uh, adjust the bass a little bit better when, when necessary. Um, on the road, I used uh, the KRK's uh, Rocket. Uh, V8. Um, I really like the speakers because they're, they're small, compact, and still have a pretty, pretty solid sound. Um, I've lo had a lot of uh, neighbors uh, complaining when I went in hotel rooms, uh, so the sound is definitely really cool. Um, but uh, it's, it's definitely a really good, uh, good, uh, good speaker for on the road. But you know, my preference really goes towards the Genlex and the PSIs myself. So that's it for today, um, you know, learning a little bit more about arranging a track and also I gave a few tips about, about how to build your own studio, you know, how to make sure that the sound in your studio is, is as the best as possibly can be. So the next episode is going to be all about um, answering questions uh, people have sent in. Uh, you can still send in uh, questions on social at Center Van Doorn and I'm going to treat uh, as much uh, questions as possible. So uh, see you next time.